I met a gentleman who was pastor in a church west of Winchester, brought the counselor to it, and the whole team, the program and everything, and I was just kind of uh, on site trying to figure out what in the world I was doing. And from that time on, he's been one of our greatest cheerleaders, supporters, encouragers, door openers, whatever you might want to think. But uh, Tommy Herndon, Reverend Tommy Herndon, has been uh, just a true, and you know, we even get the district superintendent to come out and mow grass for us. <laughs> he has just been a tremendous, tremendous source of encouragement and support for this camp ministry. And Tommy, it's a great pleasure that we invite you to come forward and share with us. Folks, I know you're supposed to be finished by four, and it's after that, so uh, I promise to be finished by six. We've heard all day about the vision called Camp Overload. It started 50 years ago and continues today. It's a place of beauty and a place to be close to God. We often say up here, Come meet God on the mountain. God is everywhere, but especially here at Overlook. God has met our children here for 50 years. God has met our adults who just needed a chance to get away. And God will be here for the next 50 years. You know, I want you to, to look at this place in a little different way. I want you to meet God on this mountain. But what I want you to do is take God away from this mountain. I want you to take God home with you when you leave. Now, this camp has been blessed and has been that way for years and years. It started April 24, 1966. This camp, this, these buildings continue to be a blessing. Ken DeWitt, and I'm not going to bore you with all that Ken DeWitt has said. He has, he's one of those guys that writes a book about everything he thinks about. <laughs> but he says that there is a pattern to life. And when you observe the life of Jesus, we notice a pattern in this. And that pattern is you need to have a place where you go away that's quiet, where you meet God. And he says that's the important part of camp ministry. Now, I want you to know that Ken DeWitt says this all over the world. You and I, say it all over this district and the Winchester district and the, the Stanton district. This deliberate pattern of spiritual retreat continued greatly to Christ's effectiveness as a spiritual leader and a teacher because Christ went away and went to the mountain and he slowed down. The teaching of the Sabbath and Jesus' example of retreats invites us to enter places apart from our normal surroundings by encouraging those around us and those in our congregations go on retreat, we learn some essentials of the faith and discipleship through direct experience. When we model the practice ourselves, we guide and inspire them to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Retreats teach people to receive through letting go, to move closer by being still, to hear the divine word in silence. Uh-oh, I just messed the camera. <laughs> You know, it, it, it's one of those things cameras don't like me. They break when I, when I get in front of them. <laughs> but I think that, that you, you need to understand today that Jesus' teaching invites people to release their grasp on the, the customary patterns and discover something that's deeper. Jesus says in Luke 9, 24, for those who want to, uh, to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. Now, Ron told you about my experience of where it started here at Camp Overlook. Just about the time Ron came to work here, maybe not very, very many months after that, Ron asked me to, to head up four, five, and sixth grade camp. Now, I don't know whether any of you have ever headed up 100 or 150 four, five, and sixth graders. It's like herding cats. <laughs> But what a wonderful time we had. And then it was such a wonderful time, Ron, we had to have it again. And I think it was the third time with the, the clincher. But we had a wonderful time. Now, Ron and I were here, but nobody else was here. I had to bring counselors with me. I had to go find people to work. Ron played his guitar. Ron was not the cook, but he had to help cook. 
Ron did a little bit of everything. But one of the things that we found while we were here together was that when we get God's children together, God has an, an anointing on those children. We had kids who had never been away from home, ones who had never heard the stories of Jesus. I remember thinking after my first week, I'd never been away from a radio, a television, or a telephone for a week at a time. And you know, I got along just fine, not one soul missed me while I was here. <laughs> I remember kids going to a bonfire and hearing the words of Jesus and responding to the call that he had made on their lives. Kelly, that's a Thursday night. It always works. I remember climbing the hill above the mess hall and lay down on the grass and look at the stars. And I remember how many of our kids had never been outside and looked up and been at a place where there is no light and the whole sky becomes something that's beautiful. You have to come to the mountain to look at the stars. I remember Ron and his guitar, his ability to lead. I remember his enthusiasm for this place, and nothing was ever, ever impossible for Ron. I remember Ron living on campus, and he seemed to always be here. I said to him one day, Brenda, do you ever go home? And then I asked Brenda that question one day, and her answer was no. <laughs> I remember just this past summer, him staying up on campus until 2 a.m. in the morning with the campers. And then he went back over to Blessings Lodge to sleep a little bit because he was afraid he'd wake all the children up at your house. Ron is always here. I don't know how one can thank somebody for 37 years in ministry. I do not know how to do that, but I'm going to try. Camp Overlook has and has, has had many who have worked and built and mowed and counseled, but for the past 37 years, we have been able to experience God on the mountain because God called Ron Roby, and you can say amen. 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 Let's give him a hand. Oh, yeah. Ron, I want you to know, I told my wife when I was appointed to the Harrisonburg District, there's one person that better not retire while I'm here and before I do, because I don't want to be on the committee to select a successor. Well, guess what, Stephen? And guess what, Kathy? And guess what, Bobby? We're on the committee. Ron has told us he's going to work until April 1st. He will complete 37 years. And what a joy it has been. And you not only should clap, you should hug him, you should shake his hand. What, it was funny when I was here just recently for the uh, counselor's retreat and reunion. Uh, they got in a long line, Kelly, you remember that? And they just circled the whole picnic shelter down there and it took about 30 minutes. And at the end of it, I realized everybody wanted to say something to Ron and thank him for his work. Now, Ron, we're going to do that after this is over because we're running late. <laughs> but we want you to go out to that door right there, and we want to have a chance to speak to you as we leave, okay? Now, we have a bishop who was supposed to be here today. Now, I don't know why bishops aren't where they're supposed to be. <laughs> and I certainly don't know why I was invited to take his place because my Korean is not very good. <laughs> but I want to tell you, he is all over this conference and he is everywhere. Today he's in Northern Virginia. But since he came to our conference and since he's been our bishop for the last three years, he has challenged all of us to practice the spiritual disciplines. Now, I don't know of a better place to practice spiritual disciplines than Camp Overlook. Spiritual disciplines include prayer, they include reading God's Word, they include spending time alone with God, uh, they include communion, and sometimes simply sitting on the porch at Blessings Lodge and watching the sun go down. What a beautiful thing that is. Bishop Cho could not be here today that sends his greetings and his warm wishes. Bishop Cho says we need to pray about everything. Sometimes I have trouble understanding that I go to him with a problem and say, I need some help, and he says, I'll pray about it. <laughs> well, then God comes to me and tells me.
tells me the answer, and I never hear from the bishop. You're right. <laughs> and is positioned to have 50 more wonderful years. I hope today, as you leave, that you take a walk somewhere alone and ask God to fill you with His love and His peace and His joy that this space provides. Now, I was privileged to meet some of the counselors a few weeks ago. Now, I want you to know that we've had the best counselors in the world up here, Amen. but there must be some stuff going on after I left. <laughs> Because I saw many of them who had children. And I saw many of them who had found their spouse on the mountain. And I remember saying to a couple of them last week or a few weeks ago, I thought you were supposed to find Christ on the mountain. <laughs> well, one young lady said, after I found Christ, I found a sweeter part of my life. <laughs> but what a joy it is to say to you, not only are the camp children and youth touched up here, but the camp counselors are touched. God is truly here. Truly here. Camp Overlook owes much to Ron Roby. I think we all agree. And Ron, we're going to have a chance to express that. You and Brenda at the back door. But I want, would, would say to you that as he says, I want to slow down and I want a new director to come in place, I think you would say to me that what we need to find is somebody Somebody that loves this job so much that they will dedicate their life to it. Now, I want to talk to you about staff for a minute. Kelly Sprague has been Ron's right arm for more than 11 years. Kelly hires the summer staff. She does a major amount of summer camp uh, during that season. She's raising her family here on campus. It is a joy to see her fulfilling her call. Now let's thank Kelly for 11 wonderful years and pray for her as she helps with the transition as it comes. Let's thank Kelly. <laughs> Kelly has a smile on her face all the time. And I think it's just wonderful. Just wonderful. Uh, we were talking about, by the way, about a group in Page County at lunch today that needs to go to Washington and we need a school bus. And Kelly, we understand there's one in your parking lot all the time, right? So, okay. <laughs> We're glad of that. <laughs> Gary Fischel. Gary, stand up. Can you stand up? <clears throat> Gary says, I've been sitting all day. <laughs> Sit down because it's going to take me 10 minutes to tell all I know about you. <laughs> Kelly has been our maintenance person here for 14 years. So is Gary. <laughs> what? What's wrong? You said Kelly. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> you know, gotta realize I'm trying to take 20 minutes down to 10. <laughs> hey Gary, I know who you are. <laughs> well, I want you to thank Gary because Gary's on call every weekend. He's the only one that knows how to fix anything when it breaks, and I'm being really facetious here. But he certainly is the one that gets the call first. He's the sanitation department, the water department, the lawn department, and even the bus driver when needed. I want us to thank Gary for, for his calling to Camp Overlook. <clears throat> Gary had some back troubles a few years ago. And some of us came up to make sure that everything got done in order that Gary could all continue on here. And what a blessing it is. And Gary, if you really want recognition, just get somebody to do your work for a few months while you recoup. That, that always does. <laughs> I came away from here with more sunburn than I'd ever had in my life. <laughs> Lori Bennett is the voice on the phone. Uh, is Lori here? Not today. She's fairly new, but she's the, a busy person uh, in the newness of all this. She's busy in, the, in her newness. Someone has to keep a calendar. Someone has to keep up with where everybody is. Somebody has to keep up with all the reservations. She's the person who runs Ron and Kelly and Gary down when they're needed. 
I want us to give her a hand, and Ron, would you tell her we clap for her, okay? <laughs> Now, we, we run into trouble anytime we try to name people, but I want to tell you about John Packard. John Packard is somebody that comes up here every week to mow and to do things that Gary needs him to do. And Gary, if I jump, I'll get my, my people mixed up completely. John Packard has been doing that for a long time. Uh, Buddy Fitzpatrick is his cohort in crime, and they are around here a lot. Now, I want to tell you that when we clap for John and we clap for Buddy, that we also need to be clapping for all of those who come up here to do the work that needs to be done. And if you haven't been up here to do some work, talk to Ron or Gary because they will give you a job. <laughs> but this place uh, runs on volunteer help. And it gets we get what we get what we have by, by keeping it up, and we have to keep it up. And in order to do that, it takes many hours of all of us. So I invite you now to thank John and thank Buddy and thank all of those who volunteered. <laughs> you know, the volunteers do everything from cutting wood to mowing grass to digging ditches to doing all the things that have to be done. A couple of years ago, we had a Paul Bunyan day up here. <clears throat> Would you believe 95 people showed up to cut wood? 95 people. Now, I want you to volunteer, and I want you to go back to your churches and ask for others to volunteer, and I want you to put on a happy face and tell people, we can't do this job unless we work together. Now, I want you to turn to the back of the program, there's a prayer. And I want us to pray this together. Now, Ron, we haven't let you off the hook, buddy. Uh, we still want you at the back door after uh, Stephen comes and gives us a benediction. But I want you to pray this prayer. This was the prayer that was prayed the day that uh, this place was dedicated and had groundbreaking in 1966. On its 50th anniversary, it is a wonderful prayer for us to pray to rededicate ourselves. So let's pray together. O oh God, who dwell us in the high and holy place of eternity, and who needest not the work of men's hands, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. Yet thou hast condescended to meet with thy people when they do live that very time, honor thee well. Thou art We come in humility to set apart upon a land whereon to build a camp to thy glory. This day we propose to break the ground that a solid foundation may be laid, that the buildings be built and be standing. Before we can break this ground, we need the assurance of thy divine blessing. Grant therefore, O Lord, we beseech thee to accept the purpose of our hearts and give thy blessing to the work of our hands. As we erect buildings here to thy name, do thou, O Lord, protect them in the process of erection. Protect them by thy power, the work of them shall labor here. Grant, O merciful Father, these buildings may be a light to all who walk in darkness. They may be a place for learning and fellowship, and they may cause all who come here to lift their hearts unto thee. 